Oh yeah, it happens once a month. It's like that hormonal time during the month. Just like, well, I'm fat now and right. I hate training, so let's change up everything. And then like <laughs> six days later, it's like, I'm the best. Let's yeah, do right. exactly yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You're listening to Barbell Logic, brought to you by Barbell Logic Online Coaching, where each week we take a systematic walk through strength training and the refining power of voluntary hardship. Welcome to the Barbell Logic Podcast. I'm Nikki Sims here with Matt Reynolds, and I have a new microphone. And it's all set up and I'm super excited. Man, you sound so much better. Hopefully all my S's and T's sound a lot better. (laughs) (laughs) Sounds great. And hopefully I'm recording this properly so that I'm not just sounding like a liar right now. (laughs) Yeah, this is how when Matt does his video reviews for me, he uses his fancy setup and it's like, I'm just like a special one of a kind podcast. (laughs) When when you do my video (laughs) reviews, it's really nice. (laughs) I get that a lot on business calls or... Or even if I do audio calls that are kind of important business calls or whatever, then I'll just call over the internet and do it on the microphone. So yeah, this microphone changes your life. It's a sweet microphone. It's it's actually kind of cool to listen to yourself on this microphone. You know how when you first hear your voice on recordings, you're like, do I sound like that? That's awful. Yeah. But once you get this mic, because it's so full and you get a good set of headphones, you're like, ooh, I sound all right. It's good. Ooh, so I'm going to re-record my voicemail greeting. And maybe I'll like some of the books that I'm reading, I'll read them aloud to myself so that I can listen to them later. (laughs) Perfect. (laughs) My own audible. That's perfect. (laughs) So what are we chatting about today? Okay, this is a cool subject that you, me and Andrew have actually been talking about where we talk about MED plenty of times, but sometimes an incremental change in volume, frequency, intensity is not the right minimum effective dose. Something else needs to change. Yep. And as you just put it, something, it's something that is demanded by the human element of training. Yeah. So what does it look like from a client when, you know, you're making MED changes, but it's like, there's still a problem? Yeah. Well, so the there's still a problem is the interesting part, because that's really the subjective piece of this is that the way Andrew posed this, I'll read actually what Andrew wrote to us in kind of the private Slack messages. He said, one of the things he's starting to encounter with the next level of programming challenges with our clients is that. MED is wonderful for smoothing out the late novice to mid to late intermediate, but he's noticing a pattern emerging where some of our advanced clients are getting bored of the program even when it's working. Like it's working well. Yeah. Yeah. And I've felt this before. I mean, major first world problems. It's like, right. wow, my all my lifts are going up by the same amount each week and they're going up the same amount each week and I hate yeah, it. Yeah, right. <laughs> Like, come on. <laughs> yeah. So if everybody was a robot and was just, and, and by the way, there are people that absolutely can do this forever and they're fine. And it's the best way to do it. Probably. These are the same kind of people, by the way, I was thinking about this, when I was thinking about the show yesterday. People can eat literally the same thing all the time. I, I hate people like that. Like I want some, you know, <laughs> I want some good food. Yeah. I wonder if and my brother is like that. I'm like, how are you like that? I'm not like that at all. And we're so similar in stuff. And he's just like, I go, do you think you taste less than I do? He's like, oh, I definitely taste less than you do. Really? He's like, I don't, I'm not a super taster. Yeah. He's just like, uh, you know, like food's just fuel. And he's like, you know, he's like, I can tell the difference between really good wine or really good whiskey or really good coffee and not. But he's like, you know, it's just not like a a good steak and a great steak is not like a life changing experience for him. Hmm. And it is for me. I'm like, oh God, this is. Wagyu Kobe A5 beef. I'm like, you know, <laughs> do you think it's insane that some people like people like your brother are maybe a little bit more results driven versus some of us who are kind of process driven? Does that make sense? Yes, for sure. For sure. Yeah. He is a hundred percent means to an end. Mm-hmm. You tell me the means to get there, I'll do it. So, you know, I watch him. He gets his nutrition. He's a client as well. So you guys know him because he's been on the podcast a bunch but he's a client. He's a paying client at block. <laughs> I make him pay. It's, it's even though he's my brother. Uh, and he gets nutrition coaching from Jillian. And I see, so I see their back and forths. I can see what they're, mm. and 
he is a robot. Jillian's like, here's what we're going to do. We're going to do some low calorie days at, you know, whatever it is, 2,200 calories. And then every third day, you're going to bump it up to 3,400 calories. No problem. He's like, I got it. He's like, I haven't eaten. So he had this issue. We actually talked about it on a previous podcast episode where he was eating after dinner. He would eat perfect till dinner. And he would like snack Mm -hmm. and drink whiskey and stuff like that after dinner. And then one day he was like, I'm not going to do that anymore. He's like, I saw him post this week to Jillian. Sorry, dude, that I'm like, well, I wouldn't do this, by the way, to our other <laughs> clients. This is my brother, so I'm going to just... <laughs> just <laughs> Family. We're, just, we're not subject to HIPAA, I don't think. Yeah, so he's like, uh, I haven't had one thing to eat after dinner in seven months. It was something like that. <gasps> I was like, what? Cold turkey like that. Wow. Yeah, he's just... That's the way he is. That's the way he is. And honestly, he's kind of that way with programming, too. Mm. I'm programming him. He is just like... He doesn't... He's just like, tell me what to do. I'll do it. He doesn't care. And I, you know, I have clients like that and we seem to attract people that are a little bit on the spectrum. And if they're on the spectrum, they can do MED until Jesus comes back. It does not matter. (laughs) But if somebody is a little more about experiences Mm -hmm. and not just results, not just like I, you know, I want to enjoy training. Yeah. Then at some point, the minimum effective dose is not the incremental change because it's not effective enough because at some point your client is going to get bored and quit Mm -hmm. and then it's no longer effective. So even though it would be effective, Mm -hmm. it's not because the human element is they need some variability. They need some variance in their training. And so we have to start thinking about, well, okay, then how are we going to vary this? And it usually looks like a much bigger change. It might be an entire new style of programming, which doesn't feel at all like MED. Mm Mm-hmm. But you have to do it because you understand that these people are human yeah, and they need a change. And this is something important that can happen here is you have to stand up as the coach and make sure you're not like switching frequently because the lifter just is like, oh, I'm bored. I want something new. I'm bored. I want something new. Like you have to make sure as a coach, you're not responding to like shiny new object syndrome. But and then when you do make that change, it has to be because you think that it's the right thing to do as their coach and taking into consideration that it's still your job to still get them the right results. So be careful as a coach that you're not just being like, well, they got bored. I got to change it. You know, that's right. Yeah, that's a, that's a great point. So first off, you would be hard pressed to convince me that there's any reason to make a change that's not sort of orthodoxy, incremental minimum effective dose change for anyone up to late intermediate. Yeah. There's just a simple system that works for almost everybody. And it's not always the same incremental change, but it is an incremental change. So for some people, you'll get them into intermediate and you might add more volume. And some people, you might add more frequency, but you're still just making the incremental change. Once your clients are advanced, advanced clients have to train for something. That's, this is another important piece of this. They really have to train for something. Again, not everybody. Sometimes you get you know, the weirdos are just like, I'll, I'll just do this forever. I have to train for something. Mm. You, I, I know I coach you, you kind of have to train for something. I want to look forward to something. So that might be a competition. It might be an online, an online meet, which we've got an online meet that just posted mm-hmm. the next online meet. It's a push pull for the USSF. So you can go to the website and check that out at Barbell Logic. Sometimes it's a vacation coming up. I'm going to Mexico and I want to get leaner and I want to look better. And that's a completely different goal than than getting ready for the meet. And so Mm -hmm. for advanced lifters, they usually have to be working towards a goal. And occasionally I've got an advanced lifter who decides to just pivot the sport. Like they're not going to do powerlifting or strength lifting. They're going to do Olympic weightlifting or they're going to do strongman or they're going to do a mud run. And I don't care if they're an advanced, listen, if they're an advanced strength athlete, they're strong. Mm -hmm. If they want to do a mud run or they want to go do a Spartan race, sure, let's do it. Let's train for that, right? I got a guy right now that's training for triathlon. Yeah. You paid your dues. Now it's time to have fun. That's exactly right. Right. And so usually that is where we end up making a a larger sort of change. If the lifter still wants to make a change and they still want to pursue strength, I still think there are things that can be done. I was thinking about this. This is where a program, let's say they're following minimum effective dose sort of programming and they sort of slowly transition incrementally into sort of basic four-day split block training, something like that. And they're just tired of doing, you know, five sets of five. The next week they do five sets of five a little heavier. And the next week they go five sets of four. And then they go four sets of four. And they're just like, this sucks. (laughs) So 
And it does sometimes. It does kind of suck sometimes. <laughs> then we'll make a change. This is where a program like a 531 variant where you can add things like AMRAP sets. You're like, you know what? Let's just, mm -hmm. let's do an AMRAP. You got to get five, but you're going to AMRAP it. So if you can get 12, let's get 12. And the next week you got to get three, but if you can get seven, let's get seven. You know, mm -hmm. that can be fun. This is where adding like body weight accessory work works really good for somebody who wants to put on some more hypertrophy. So, okay, let's get really good at moving our body weight. Like, so we're going to do a lot of push ups and pull ups and chin ups and different various grips on pull-ups and chin-ups and neutral grip and things like that. We're going to do dips. We're going to do glute ham raises. We're going to do, you know, all those sorts of things. That that works really well too. So you start to think about, well, what's the what's the goal change? And even something simple like changing the order yes. of um, workouts during the week actually makes a difference. Yep. Like, because maybe you're just like bored of squatting on Saturdays. So you know what? Maybe I'll bench on Saturdays. That's a shorter workout. It gives me more time to not be in the gym. So even just a small tweak like that can actually be helpful. That's exactly right. Um, we'll do a future episode on this. And this isn't, unfortunately, this is not available to everybody right now, but we're beta testing uh, these rep one devices. They're velocity devices. That alone has really changed those of us who are doing it. It's made training fun because now we're training for velocity. So it's like the old Tendo units. You attach it to the barbell and it reads the speed. You put it in on an app. You see what your speed is and what it tells you based on speed, what your estimated one rep max would be for the day. And so if you need to train at 75%, say, okay, I'm going to train at 75% of my one rep max. That's going to be sort of like the starting point. But it will start telling you what you're a little slow today or you're a little fast today. So we'll bump it up or bump it down a little bit. And that's made it really fun. So you notice one of the things that's been nice. I'm, this is what I've been doing in my training is you move every rep with like clear intention. I'm intentionally moving it as quick as I can. The concentric phase. And, you know, Andrew's doing that. Jordan Stanton's doing mm. that. Carl Schutz doing that. Jason Ball's doing We've got our guys that are, and it's fun. And it's, mm -hmm. honestly, the programming hasn't changed that much, but that variable change has made it really interesting and fun to kind of pursue. And uh, Brett McKay is going to start doing that soon. And so little things like that matter. And so here's the thing. If you are walking mm -hmm. through the process of LP, late, you know, late novice, sort of programming, you start to transition out of novice into intermediate, early intermediate, mid intermediate, you've got to kind of pay your dues with that stuff. There's really no reason to ever change the programming there. And as you get out of intermediate stages mm -hmm. and into late intermediate and moving into advanced where you would do programs like block training or DUP or even like a 531, like a month long program where you're kind of setting one rep max new, new PRs once a month or or longer, then that's the point where you might end up occasionally making a larger change. Now, shouldn't happen more than maybe a couple times a year. And this comes back to your question where as a coach, if your client is kind of always going, mm -hmm. I think I want to do this. And I think I want to do this. Like it's, you know, shiny object sort of thing. Here's what I do. I had a, I had a guy, one of my best clients, shout out to Justin. I've talked to him before. He's a, he's a great client, does exactly what I say, but occasionally he'll get like, I think I want to do a fat loss cycle you know, for the next 10 weeks, let's fat loss. Or for the next 10 weeks, let's do hypertrophy. And that's fine with me. He's an advanced lifter. He's a good lifter. But here's what I do. I write, I send him back an email or a DM or whatever. And I say, here's what your program is going to look like if that's what you want. Here's what the effects are going to be. Here's the trade-off. I want you to sit on it for 48 hours and in 48 hours, come back to me and tell me if you still want to do it. And so far, every time I've done that with him, he's like, yeah, let's keep pushing strength. <laughs> I'm like, okay, it's fine. Right. So, I mean, it doesn't matter to me. So, yeah. And I think that's the way you do it. Because people, you know, here's what happens people get in, everybody has these days where you feel like mm -hmm. fat ass. You put on clothes, you look yourself in the mirror, you got to go out. You're like, God. Or like, or something <laughs> that you walk up a flight of stairs, you're huffing and puffing. You're like, yeah. I'm so out of condition. I need to add a bunch of conditioning to my pro. And it's sort of this emotional thing. Yeah. And you reach out to your coach and you're like, yeah, all the time. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. It happens once a month. It's like, that hormonal time during the month, just like, well, I'm fat now and right. I hate training. So let's change up everything. And then like six days later, it's like, I'm the best. Let's yeah, keep right. doing exactly yeah. what we're doing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, you know, and, and for guys, it seems like so many things affect testosterone levels for them. Mm -hmm. Some guys are just naturally higher, naturally low testosterone. But a lot of guys, most of the guys are in that kind of middle of the bell curve. The more stress they have outside the gym, right? Life stress, work stress, 
or even physical stress. Like if they're doing other stuff, like the guy that's the, that I'm coaching right now that's doing triathlon training, he has to have a bunch of cortisol in his system. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy is swimming, running, biking, and lifting multiple hours, basically six days a week. Damn. Like it's just, it's a bunch of work. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, the fluctuations for men as well with testosterone and cortisol and stress and those sort of things make a difference as well. I've noticed the same thing, right? When my, I know, I can tell when my testosterone is, is kind of getting low, I can see what's going on. And I'm like, I'm a, I'm a fat ass. I should start like doing trail running. I should start, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah. stuff I would never want to do. Yeah, totally. You know, and then when the stress kind of casts off and I train a little bit and, you know, then (laughs) things are, I'm like, now let's go back to I just want to do trail running and watch Hallmark movies. (laughs) There you go. I don't mind trail running. People would be surprised about that for me. Yeah. I have no desire to ever run on a road ever. Mm -hmm. I mean, you Mm -hmm. you forget, like I live in Missouri in the Ozark Mountains. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous. And uh, so I like, you know, running on a trail. I like like mountain biking trails, especially Mm -hmm. ones that aren't super popular. So there's not mountain bikes all over the place. People running over. Yeah. And go out there and just, you know, run. Like I'll run like one or two miles, not like five miles. Like I can, five miles is crazy. I would never do anything <laughs> ridiculous like that. But, you know, that's fun. Or like, you know, I like hiking or rucking. So I'll do that stuff sometimes. But you know, like I've paid my dues for 20 years as a strength athlete. Yeah. If that's what I want to do, that's what I want to do. And part of that might just be that like you want to be outside. Just like, oh, good, go be outside. Yeah. It's not going to affect your training. Go do that. I feel good. I feel good being in the sun. You know, you're in Southern California. We've got the, like the best weather in the world. It's perfect all the time. I know it's a big deal for you going out, going to the beach, getting in the sun. It just changes that. Yeah. You know, I don't know what Andrew does up there in Washington where it's just, mm-hmm. you know, dark all the time. It's just cloudy and gross all the time. <laughs> he wears this down jacket every day. <laughs> yeah, we do. We do these Zoom calls. And here we are. Like you're in a tank top. I'm in shorts and a t-shirt. Andrew's in a down jacket. <laughs> And like a toque, like a like a beanie <laughs> on August 24th. This was on Wednesday. He <laughs> said, like, my garage is still a little chilly in the mornings. I was like, my garage is 130 right now. Like, it's awful. Um, you know, one of the things I've been doing that's fun, fun for us, Rachel and I, we've been training for a while and I'm getting tired of the same old, same old. And so what we've been doing is we've gone to, we train a four day split. We put a real significance on the first lift. So we squatted this morning and then we go out to the garage and I've got all these accessory pieces now that I've bought. So I have a, I have a, a vertical leg press from Titan. I got the leg extension, leg curl, which you now have too. I've got the, um, a reverse hyper. I've got a glued ham raise. I've got an echo bike and we'll just do circuits through that. Like we'll do a, literally like five or six movements, 30 seconds on 30 seconds off. And it's our version of conditioning, but I only have to ride the echo bike once in every six exercises Mm -hmm. because so i'll use stuff like glute ham raise and reverse hyper and and uh, leg press as conditioning so it's not super heavy i knock out as many reps as i can in 30 seconds so you're knocking out maybe 20 reps of a lot of that stuff the buzzer sounds you get up you move to the next one so what was going on in your programming or not going on in your programming or in your life that made you want to put that circuit in i just want to leave and Mm -hmm. i don't want to do any more in the gym yeah, there's there's sometimes you just don't want to be in the gym anymore. That's fine. So I didn't want to do traditional. Yeah, I just didn't want to do the traditional supplemental movement and then the normal like kind of hypertrophy stuff in the gym. This is in my garage. I, we open up the garage, you know, and it's the neighborhood's nice. You get to watch people walking by, walking their dogs and stuff. And it's just, you know, I don't mind doing some basic conditioning in the heat of the summer with the garage door open. And we get, I can go through... 18 sets so like six different exercises for three rounds so you're getting through 18 sets and we're knocking it out in like 30 minutes so you're doing like a 30 minute session 30 seconds on 30 seconds off and you're just hammering this stuff you're like it's an easy 30 minutes so you come in and we squat it takes 40 minutes to squat and then we go out and do all our conditioning in 20 to 30 minutes in an hour hour and 10 minutes you're like you can't get a better workout than that yeah like, you know, you get done and you're like, I feel great. Yeah, it's toasty. You know, and I've, I feel great the rest of the day. And so mm-hmm. it's, um, so yeah, that, that, those are the times when I think that minimum effective dose, there are times when that very small incremental change, while it will work and it is working, 
you have to be in tune with your clients enough to know they're getting bored. Mm -hmm. And even though it's working and they're still setting PRs, you need to make a change for them yeah. to give them some to freshen up. And, I'll, you know, again, this is sort of heresy in our world, right? So it's not, it's not CrossFit. It's not, we're not putting stuff in a hopper and pulling it out like random sort of stuff. And I don't think, you know, we don't believe in muscle confusion or anything like that's ridiculous. But I do think there's a time when people just need a mental break. Mm -hmm. The same way, I, was, I think I said this before we started recording, the same way as when people are following, like if it fits your macros on a nutrition basis and they're, everything fits the macros. And the nutrition coach is like, let's say they're trying to lose some fat. So after a week or two, the nutrition coach is like, hey, I'm going to pull five grams of fat or 10 grams of fat a day. And so we're going to go from 70 grams of fat to 60 grams of fat. And you're like, okay. And so you drop it a little bit and you go from 60 grams of fat to 55 grams of fat, and then 50 grams of fat. And then they pull a couple, they pull 10 grams of carbs and then another 10 grams of carbs, bump your protein up a little bit. And you just do this incremental steps like all the time. And eventually you're like, yeah, I'm done with this if, if it fits your macros for a while. I need something different. Yeah. And you go, okay, I'm going to intermittent fast or I'm going to do yeah. keto or I'm going to do carb backloading or carb cycling. Like you pick some kind of completely different diet that's not at all what you've been doing. So you don't have to weigh and measure and count macros because you just need a mental break. And it's, it's the same thing, I think, with yeah. training. Our free will, just like we want to exercise our free will. <laughs> just like, please let me choose. Let me, yeah. let me not do what I'm supposed to do today. <laughs> Yeah, that's exactly right. So, yeah, I mean, that's, I think that's the big gist of it all. So do you ever make pretty big programming pivots where you have someone on a MED approach that's working and let's go someone who's like pretty, we'll go with like early advanced. They've been running a program for like six months and you notice that they're like, they're just like skipping their second or third lifts or exercises of the day and they're just like straight up not doing a session or they're just not posting videos what do you do when something like that occurs yeah great question so the first thing i'm going to ask them is do you want to change the goal mm. do you want to keep pushing for strength and let's say the answer is yes because that's actually where it gets harder right mm -hmm. because if they say yeah let's focus on fat loss or let's focus on hypertrophy or let's focus on conditioning or that's an easy pivot then right because the goal is different but let's say they say man, I'm just getting kind of tired of doing the same thing every Thursday and Friday and yeah. Monday and Tuesday, but I do still want to get stronger. Then what I'll almost always do, it depends on what they're doing, but let's say they're doing kind of a traditional, again, kind of block or DUP, or they're kind of moving in that direction. What I'll almost always do is I'll do my version of a West side split or a five, three, one type. So they'll come in and I just let them like hit PRs every single session mm. for about six weeks. Mm. So we pick a new movement, we'll come in. So if, it, if it's five, three, one, it's not a new movement. You stick with the normal movements. You're all right, let's, let's try to set a new PR with, and a lot of times I'll do PRs even with five, three, one, it's fun because you can do PRs with a specific weight increment. So you're like, okay, mm -hmm. let's see how many times you can press 205. Yeah. Let's see how many times you can bench press 225. Let's see how many times you can squat 315 or deadlift mm -hmm. four, 405 or whatever. And so it doesn't have to be for five. And so, you know, they deadlift 405 for eight. And you're like, all right, we got a new eight rep max, mm -hmm. which you never really had an eight rep max. Now we have one and we, we can try to beat that in three more weeks or whatever. So I'll do that. Or I'll do the West side style split, which we've talked about in the past in the podcast. If the person has access to a handful of kind of various bars, maybe a box for box squatting, maybe bands and chains, and you can change the movement up, then I just give them a new movement every week. Mm -hmm. So, all right, let's do close grip bench press this week. All right. After that, let's do floor press. After that, let's do reverse band press. Let's do chain press. Let's do board presses. Um, and you just cycle through that and let them hit PRs. And I'll pick, I usually pick four or five movements and rotate through those four or five and then do them again and let them try to beat all those. And so mm -hmm. you get through eight or 10 weeks of training and set new PRs on all those different fun lifts. And it just is sort of a mental break. It's fun. Mm -hmm. Now, if someone is like, I had this not that long ago with Brett, Brett had lifted heavy for so long and he needed a break. I'm going to go to volume. I'm like, let's do a hypertrophy stuff. Let's not do anything that's uber heavy for the barbells. Let's do lots of body weight stuff and just get And the goal is to get out of the gym and feel good, feel better. Mm -hmm. So instead of doing sets of one to three or heavy sets of five, 
we're doing sets of six to 10. Yeah. And it's not that heavy. It's like, you know, RP six or seven, somewhere in that ballpark. And it's okay because they're moving good weight and they're getting good volume and tonnage. And then they're doing a bunch of body weight stuff. And it's just, they don't have to chase numbers. Yeah. So that's kind of way I, that's the way I do it. So it's usually the opposite of what they've been doing. So if they've been chasing numbers, they don't chase numbers. If they've been following percentages, four sets of four, four sets of three, then let's, let's hit some PRs and let's have some fun. That's the direction I go. Yeah. It'll likely get to a point where after, you know, six or eight weeks, they ask you, okay, I'm ready to chase numbers again. And that's great. That's right. It's like when you're on a vacation and you leave when you still want the vacation to go on, <laughs> you know, yeah. like you're not sick of it. Like you get to this point where you're so like you're present to your training, you're relaxed and you want more. Yep. It's a great spot for a client to be in where they just like love that thought of like really pushing themselves again. And it, it's perfect. That means I think you reduced that intangible variable, you know, where it's just like training becomes like a grind yeah. and you don't want to just keep forcing them through it because yep. they've already paid their dues. It's like, okay, I respect what you're, mental kind of state is now for your training we're still going to keep you strong but let's like relieve that other pressure that you're feeling that's exactly right and remember we've talked about this you know it's beating a dead horse but what's the most important thing for our clients consistency consistency compliance like compliance yeah. we want them to continue to train and then the form and then form right like those two things that technique and consistency mm -hmm. the program it matters the boy it doesn't matter like consistency and form matter yeah. And so what I'm trying to do, and again, you can go back to that. There are these people for me, it's mostly guys, although that may not be entirely fair. They're just that sort of robot mentality. It's that idea of, you know, training's always going to be that sort of spoonful of medicine. I'm never really going to enjoy it, but I'm never really going to miss it. I'm, I'll do it all the time. And those guys can do MED forever. Mm -hmm. But most people at some point, they're like, well, I'll say this. For everybody that's not that, I, as a coach, want to get my clients to enjoy training, to look forward to training. Mm -hmm. And so if training feels like a grind, we need to change something, right? Now, if it's a grind on week 11 in LP, sorry, bro, you're still doing it. <laughs> We're doing LP. Yep. We're not making a complete change. Suck right? it up, buttercup. That's right. But that's a pretty sure, you think about like if you really, if you really focus on training and you don't miss, you do everything you're supposed to do, you're kind of in this point that we're talking about six to eight months in. It doesn't take that long. Certainly by your end of your first year, you're at a point where you can be like, you know, and for a lot of people, they, you know, they get sick a few times, they go on vacation and they kind of restart LP a few times yeah. and it may take two years or three years. But if you really stick to it, you don't miss you're consistent. I mean, a year in, you're probably an advanced lifter. Yeah. We can create these sort of changes. And so that's, a, that's to me, that's the right thing to do is like make a change. It's a little bit different from what you've done and what you've chased. I'd be really careful with what I don't do is I don't do a massive. So if somebody has been doing, let's say heavy and low volume, yeah, I don't crush them with vol like I need to change. Let's do some hypertrophy. Perfect. Your four sets of eight, five sets of 10. No. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> no. Eh, we don't do that. Right. Because so sore. their body. So you can still make incremental minimum effective dose changes, transitioning them into the new programming. Mm -hmm. If they're not ready for that sort of volume, I do this all the time when, you know, that kind of traditional Texas method thing that goes from three sets of five to five sets of five. I always move people to four sets of five first. Yeah. Why would I go from three sets of five to five sets of five? Yeah. Let's go four sets of five and get used to that. Yeah. Then we'll go five sets of five, right? Or whatever. Mm -hmm. So you can do the same thing here with them. So for people who are wanting to do volume, maybe I'll go two sets of eight the first week and I'll go three sets of eight. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so there's no reason to hammer them with four sets of eight or four sets of 10, five sets of 10. That's crazy right off the bat. They'll be crazy sore and they'll hate you. And then it's, again, the goal is to get them to enjoy the training. And they'll be like, wait, this is not what I wanted. Never mind. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> you want them to enjoy the training. That's, that's the deal. Yeah. So, I was just going to say, I feel like this is like the emo side of MED. Yeah. <laughs> that can be the name of the, the episode. You got to be careful with it, like we said. And then here's another thing that's actually really, really helpful. These two things. You can change where you train. Mm. Makes a huge difference. Mm -hmm. So, you know, if you've been training, it's COVID. We are very pro training at home, train by yourself, like 
that's great. But at some point you're like, man, I've been training by myself for eight months. Go get a gym membership and Mm -hmm. go in there once or twice a week and just train at home half the time. Yeah. And go in there for a little while and train and get a, yeah, change of, change of scenery. And you're going to hate it in like a month or two anyway. So you'll come back to your home gym. Like, don't worry. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah, And you'll quit. (laughs) It'll bother you. So you'll be back in your home gym. Just don't worry about it. That's exactly right. I think it's fun to, when I travel to go to a gym and train a gym I've never been in before, just a fun change of pace. Mm-hmm. Um, and then the other, the other option there is to get a training partner, get a training partner, mm-hmm. get a new training partner. Yeah. They still fire your old training partner. Out. <laughs> just, you know, having some, having somebody to train with is a real benefit. Somebody to kind of push you and do the different things. And especially if you can find one, which is, this is rare, but especially if you can find one that's relatively close to you in strength, you can compete. And that's one of the things, again, that we're doing right now with, um, with the guys using the, the velocity mm. devices. We're competing with each other to see who can move fun. 315 the fastest or, awesome. or whatever. Like, that's fun. So you're like, yeah. Is there like a Tinder for lifting partners? So even though none of us are actually training together, we can post our stats. <laughs> like that. That's what we need. To ask. You know what? I think Nikki Berman actually... She actually developed yeah. a tender for lifting partners. Yeah. And when COVID happened, and then of course, you know, she just had a baby, it got put on hold, but she was telling me the other day that the app is done and she's going to re-release the app. So oh, that's awesome. Look forward to that pretty soon. So it's basically it tries to come it tries to find lifting partners for people. Yeah. I that would be cool if you could like list what kind of music you're into when you lift, like whether you like to be slapped or not. <laughs> um, what kind of <laughs> What kind of barbells you need? <laughs> Just like it right. to be like the E harmony, yeah. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, it's it's fun to train with other people mm-hmm. just to get just to kind of get out of that scenery. And I've I've seen a lot of my clients before when they're just kind of grinding it, especially in the heat of the summer or the dead ass cold of winter if they're mm-hmm. training in their garage. I'm like, mm-hmm. go just go get a gym membership for three or four months and just yeah, it's fine. Have fun over there. Like we can still do the same stuff. Mm-hmm. Most cities now, and this is not at all that was not all the case for years. Most cities have a gym that's pretty solid, right? Mm-hmm. That you can go find that's relatively close. Now, if you live in rural America, then good luck. You're probably gonna the better idea is probably to get a training partner and help train at your house. But you know, it's yeah. not a bad, not a bad gig to go find a place to train. That's great. I love doing that. It's one of my so, favorite yeah. things. Yeah. <laughs> Me too. So So there you go. So lest anyone says that we are dogmatic to the point of saying that MED incremental changes are the only thing you should ever do. And I, by the way, I do think it's the best way to program. Yeah. Really the right way to program for novice through intermediate training. Uh, we do have to always take the human element into consideration as coaches. Yeah. To say, if someone needs a change, let's give them a change. It's okay. Mm-hmm. If it's occasionally not an incremental change, that it will actually be more effective to make a bigger change because they'll be more compliant with the new programming, the new thing that they're doing, whatever's changing that thing for them so that they, they start to enjoy training again. If training seems like a grind to your clients, that's a good place to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a time where, you know, you can't let your feelings overwhelm what's working in your training, but then if you start to become non-compliant or you're not consistent, that's the time when the variables that you're used to using that are working, you need to incorporate that other variable, which like you just said, is the human element. Absolutely. Cool. Awesome. You have been listening to the Barbell Logic podcast. Thanks for tuning in. We'll continue to hammer out new episodes with Nikki and I, and now with Nikki's great new microphone, Andrew got a new one too. So we probably need to do a, we'll do a trio, a little three-way, yeah. little three-way microphone action, a trio. <laughs> trio sounds way more PG. <laughs> Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> uh, and we'll continue to come out with a series. Really excited. I think I can go ahead and pre-promote this. Dr. Sullivan is doing <gasps> uh, a series that'll come out in the next, probably in October, yes. for us on sort of barbell health. And oh gosh, that's so good. All of the stuff that he is he is so great at. So we're excited there. We've, Hell yeah. So we'll be able to start releasing some new series as well as some of continue the best of the stuff in the past and digitally remaster those and put them in good chronological order. And so I was looking, I think, I don't know, three or four days ago, I think we're at like 950 oh. reviews and we're, we're at five. So we're so close to a thousand. Oh my gosh. Get on there, folks. Please go on iTunes. And it's weird. 
I think it let me do another review and I know I've done it before, so I don't know if it just cleared my mm -hmm. cookies. It's been long enough, so go in and leave another one. If you like, see if it'll let you. <laughs> it's okay to double dip. There you go, double dip. Let's put us over a thousand. Yeah, we've got more reviews than anybody in strength in the strength training world. And so we'd love to go to iTunes and give us a review. That's the best one to do it, but all, you can always do it on Stitcher or any of the other places you listen to us. And so thank you for doing it. Pass this along to a friend or family member that needs to hear it. And we will catch you next Monday. Yeah. See you next week. See you then. <laughs>